down here. Hello, you can leave your name, uh, your country, any prayer requests in the comments as I go here and you all can pray for one another if you would like. Um, I just wanted to hop on here and say hello to everyone. We have over, let me see, 549 members right now. So I am studying Joshua 1 and I just wanted to hop on here and, uh, you know, involve you in my Bible study time. I would love to have you guys. Um, there's a free book. There's a lot of people who are just coming into this group and they maybe don't realize that there is a free book, but there is a free ebook that I wrote and it is called Miracle, an Interactive Bible Study Guide. If you go to either the units tab in this group, in the Miracle Online Bible Study Group, go in the units tab or go in the files tab you just click the little download it'll download onto your device automatically then you have to check your either your smartphone or your ipad or your computer check your download file and it should be in there it's titled miracle 8. if you still cannot find it you can email me off of my website dondyson.com go to the contact page uh, put in the subject line, please, Miracle Bible Study or something like that, PDF, something, so that I know that you want me to email that to you directly. When you get that um, on your device, you just go through the lessons that are in it. It's pretty self-explanatory, but then you can come back to the units tab, and I put a video and a brief quiz in those unit tabs, so as you get to them, you can hop on here and I have a video that is specifically addressing that lesson that you're in. So I welcome you to download your free book. Tell your friends about this Bible study. If you want to take it with somebody else, I think that you would get more out of it. Um, you can also lead your own small groups if you would like. Uh, you can get uh, some materials off of my website to do that as well. So you can lead in your church or whatever you want to do using uh using these materials i would love for you guys to do that um i think you would see phenomenal things happen when you all get together and start studying and praying with that we will go ahead and get into a study of joshua 1 1 through 9. i'm going to start by reading the scriptures so again i'm in joshua 1 1 through 9. after the death of moses the servant of the lord the lord said to joshua son of nun moses minister moses my servant is dead so now you arise you take his place and you go over this jordan you and all these people into the land that i am going to give them i'm going to stop right there and explain that there were two million it's an estimated two to three million israelites died in the wilderness they did not make it in due to rebellion but what we fail to mention is that joshua watched that so today we talk about ptsd and traumatization um, psychological effects of having a life uh, that has gone through some serious difficulty and i do not make light of that I have extreme empathy and have gone through many things myself, but as the Bible says, we come out of that and we don't even smell like smoke because when Christians come out of things like that, God resurrects us and expects us, has high expectations of his created, expects us to lead with a sound mind after we have gone through very difficult things. So Joshua, son of Nun watched the death of over two million people and then god said you you you're the one that i want you get up and lead i will strengthen you Ooh. so that's what we're dealing with in this passage god says specifically to joshua not to all the rest of the second generation israelites specifically to this one that he chose every place upon which the sole of your foot shall tread i have already given it to you so you fight from a place of victory jesus has already won for you most of the fight is within your own soul of faith once you get that conquered as a disciple in the discipline of belief in jesus christ be it unto you as you have believed you are fighting from a place of victory god is already there verse 4 
from the wilderness and this Lebanon to the great river Euphrates, all the land of Canaan to the great sea on the west shall be your territory. Essentially, God is saying there are no physical limitations on the ground that I will have you take. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. And I want to interject in there and say that God you go through a lot of difficulty sometimes where God moves all of the sin principle and the sin can be anything that is contrary to God's will for your life. So what we may consider not sin, God may have another thought on that. So anything that needs to go will go so that there is nothing between you and God. Absolutely no idolatry in that case. There's nothing between you and God here. The veil has been lifted and you are face to face with God and his purpose, specific purpose for your life. And he asks you, are you going to be obedient to this high of stakes? And the answer is yes, Lord, that we want to get to. And I hope that this Bible study helps you do that. So no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will also be with you. God says, I will never fail you. You will not be disappointed in God. I will never fail you and I will never forsake you. I will never leave you. So this is the first of the three series of be strong, be alert, be courageous. Um, God directs that three different times and every time he ups the ante, it increases. And so when we read this passage or when we look at our lives, there is a steady increase from now until we stand in front of God himself at the throne. There is a steady increase of responsibility. There is a steady increase of stakes. There is a steady increase of the natural risk that it seems that you are taking. But what is happening is you are just coming closer and closer to God's grace um, as you go through these trimesters of life, basically. So verse 6, be strong. Be absolutely confident, be absolutely confident, be of good courage, and you, the one that I choose, shall cause all of these people to inherit. You're the one that's going to cause all of these people to inherit. So this is God calling forth one leader to impact thousands or millions of people. You shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore their fathers to give them. And then verse 7, he says, only you. So God is talking about a multitude of people. So we have a tendency to get a little bit nervous. God, are you sure that I'm hearing from you correctly? You mean me. You want me to lead at my church? You want me to step up and you want me to say something? Are you sure you've got the right person? And then we look at ministry and some of us go, some of us go in front of thousands and we're expected to stand up there and give our testimony. Whereas our human nature would say, I don't want people to know that about me. We would not stand up in front of a room of 50 people and be transparent and say, this is where I was. God interrupted my life. And now this is what he is doing with me. It wasn't always easy. But I can see that God is real and he will do the same thing with you. So when we stand up in front of a room to lead people, God comes back around and says, no, I'm talking directly to you. So what God does with a leader is makes us super strong in that he is our son and he is our shield. He protects us from other people's opinions. So what used to bother us, we now know that God is with us. And we say whatever God directs us to say. And then the responsibility and the fallout lies upon God himself. So God is saying, don't worry about all of them. I'm talking to you. You be strong. You be very courageous. So he heightens it from just courageous to very courageous the second time. I want you to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Turn not from the right. Turn not to the left. And you will prosper wherever you may go. God is saying, don't dodge me. God is saying, go straight through the center of that pressure. 
The narrow gate is contracted by pressure that few find. Go straight through it. Don't dodge God to the right. Don't dodge God to the left. If you get a report uh, from whatever the case may be, a doctor's report, for example, don't dodge it. Go straight through the center of that thing step by step. Let the Lord lead you and he will take you right through the middle. Fear comes on the front end. When you go through it, your promises are there. It looks like fear on this side, promises on that side. He goes on to say, The book of the law, so the word of me, shall not depart from you. Meditate on it day and night, that you may observe and do all that is written in it. Then you shall make your way prosperous, deal wisely, and have good success. So, remember he's talking to Joshua who has seen two million people, they guesstimate, two to three million people perish. So he has seen a lot. And God comes into his life and says, you are going to have success. So I'm here to ask you today, check your faith level. Do you have that kind of faith in God? No matter what you have seen in your life, no matter what people have said to you, done, not done, no matter what the situation is, no matter what that doctor's report says, no matter what you have gone through, the abuses, the traumatization. Um, there are people on here from the Bahamas. You have seen hurricanes. You have seen towns that were and now they are leveled and they are gone. You have seen families separated. Some of you have had families separated. Uh, when I think about the people rebuilding in the Bahamas, some of them do not know where their children are. When those things happen, can you trust God beyond what you can understand? Because some pain is incalculable. We cannot fathom it. We cannot calculate it. We cannot ruminate enough about it to solve it. There is no solution to it. No one seems to have the right answers exactly. But the answers are the Word of God. The Word of God tells us that God is bigger than all that. The Word of God tells us that He's got all of that covered. So we never really lose. We only gain with God. He is eternal. This is temporary. And we have to have a heavenly mindset to get through it. But it is incalculable except for trust. And so the end of the matter is this. We need to come to a place where we trust God. Let Him love us no matter what. And then love Him back. There is no other place to go. He has the keys to eternal life. Where else are we going to go? In verse 9, final verse, God says again, third time, Have I not commanded you specifically? And, and yeah, you may have a lot of responsibility and God may be calling you to lead a lot of people. But he says, I have commanded you specifically. You're the one that I'm talking to. You're the one that I want. Be strong. Be vigorous, full of energy, be very courageous, be bold. Do not be afraid, neither be dismayed. Why not be dismayed? Don't be dismayed at all these things that you cannot understand. God says, I've got it, I've got it. God says, I understand it, I understand it. And I am God and you have to make the choice. Do you want your own will or do you want my will? If you want my will, then you will start to trust me. My mind is bigger. My goodness is more. There's always more goodness and abundance with God. There's always more blessings than what you can see. So God says, don't be afraid of it. Don't be dismayed by what you understand, what you don't understand, what you see, what you don't see. God says, I am with you wherever you go. And we have to understand in this walk with God that God is limitless. He's huge. He's colossal. There are going to be massive amounts of things that we cannot comprehend, but we can comprehend love. There may be things that we cannot keep a hold of, that we lose track of, families, houses, and lands in disarray. But we have God, we trust Him, and we can walk on. If God can call one person, Joshua, to come up and lead all of these people, He can also call you. So it, it's not beyond the realm of feasibility that God would do the same thing to us. So 
I pray that the, the book Miracle gets you started on an understanding that we definitely need to get a hold of the Word of God, break it down, and then take it like medicine. These, these words of God help us to live. We can find the answers, the patterns, we can find the characters, we can find the Word in the Word of God that helps us understand that God does the same thing with us today. God does the same script with us today. And I am confident that every person that is in this group, the amount of thought and study that you give to the Word of God will come back to you and it will be multiplied. And I am confident that the people who invest in the Word of God will reap a hundredfold return minimum because it's in this life and in the one to come. So the time that you spend in the Word of God only multiplies. It only multiplies in your life. So I will go over a few things in, in comment here. After the death of Moses, I'm hearkening back to verse 1, Joshua 1.1. 1, 1. After the death of Moses, God said. So I wanted to pause right there and I wanted to say that God speaks. God speaks to us. So our part is not to deny him that. God speaks. That's part of who he is. That's part of what he does. That's what we pray for is to hear from God. Jesus prayed for hours and hours and hours. Jesus went off often to the mountain alone to pray. He wasn't talking in and amongst himself. He was communicating with the Father. And then Jesus said, I decide as I am bidden to decide. Who decides? God. And Jesus took God's directives. So I decide as I am bidden to decide. As I talk and I pray to God, I get my orders from him. So God speaks to us. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. The voice of another they shall not follow. In Revelation, it says, listen and heed what the Holy Spirit says to the churches. So our part in this is to accept God's voice and then work with God, know the word of God, and discern that, but definitely listen to God and welcome God to speak to you. Say, your faithful servant is listening, Lord. Give me my directives and he will lead you. So our part is to say, thank you, God, that you speak to me and you woke me up early in the morning to make sure that I hear your voice. I pray in Jesus name that I do not follow anyone or anything but you. So that's our proper response. But God speaks. That's that's part of who he is. Our job is to listen. The second point in verse two, Moses is dead. So arise. So again, after a life flatlines or we go through a baptism, which is crisis, chrysos, the judgment of God, there are two outcomes from that. One is death, one is reco recovery. So pray for a full recovery because just like a beach ball is dunked under the water, it will catapult up into a new level of life. So I want to speak to you today and say, do not settle for a partial recovery in any area. When you go through a crisis, crisis, the judgment of God, what that means is something needs to divide so that he can have the good be fully good and so that he can have the sin principle be removed. It's a purification. It's an aspect where God intervenes and says, my will, not yours. And Jesus says, blessed is the one who takes no offense at me when this sort of thing happens. So the two outcomes, one is death, one is recovery. So when you decide and God decides your case and says, this one is going to recover, I'm going to use this one. This one, I still have a plan for her. I still have a plan for him. Our answer to that is to not settle for partial recovery. Keep on believing. Say that when you, when you go to heaven, say that it's a physical issue, but, but all physical issues are also spiritual issues. They're primarily spiritual issues. But say that there's a physical issue going on and you don't see a full and complete recovery until you get a resurrected body and you're standing in heaven. 
Say, say that's the case. What sense does it make to have faith in God and then we know we're going to be fine in heaven, but here on earth, we decide to tank. We decide that our, that our faith doesn't make any difference. God will take care of all that in heaven. That's not exactly how faith is supposed to go. We're supposed to go from faith to faith to faith and then to heaven. We're supposed to be continually going up. We're supposed to be continually increasing our faith, increasing our hope, increasing our love. And many people get to this point where it gets a little bit tough and God pressures them to lead. But if they can't see it in the Bible, they sit down and think that they're being punished and then their physicality and their faith goes down. Do you realize that your physicality follows your level of faith? So, be it unto you as you believed, and if you continue to see yourself fully recovered, not partially, fully, fully recovered, and you do not settle for anything less, and you are determined that you are going to see that day where you can say, I am well, and actually mean it in every aspect of the word. You can say that I am saved, and I mean in every single area. I mean inside, I mean outside, I mean everything about my life. God fully resurrected me. God fully recovered me. That's what we want to go for. So God will do it. We don't do it. God does it. But what he is looking for is your faith. What he is looking for is your faith. And I want to, I guess, sum it up in be bold, be strong, be courageous. He says that three times. So appropriate that, pro appropriate that for yourself. When God gives a directive, it's not a cold command. When God speaks a word over you like that, be bold, be strong, be courageous. When God speaks those words over you, his words are containers of supernatural power. So he is speaking into you his spirit that makes that actually happen. Your job is to simply agree and say, I receive it. If you say that I am bold, God, I'm bold. And he gives you the boldness. It's his boldness and it comes through you. If you say, God, I'm strong. I am strong because you just told me I was. That strength rises up on the inside of you. God's word never returns to him void. So when God gives a command like rise, rise up, he's speaking over you a master preacher. There is no one who can out preach God. When Jesus says, rise up to the paralytic by the pool, in that is a container house of his power. And it gets down in your spirit and it literally happens. So when God says, you have courage, you are not a coward, you are strong, be bold, be brave. I have given you permission, only you, and you will lead all these people automatically because I will do it through you. He's not joking. He is serious and he means you. So the word rise, I want to go over this real quick, is kum in the original languages. Kum means rise up. So I will go through and read the definitions real quick. Stand, it means to stand up. So that hearkens to Paul when he says, having done all the crisis demands, can you stand firmly in your place? Stand means you are valid. Stand means you are established, you have a reason to be here. Stand means even if you're the remnant and all the people are gone, like Joshua, all the people are gone. His family was gone. So even like Joshua, you have validity. God has you alive. God has you have a heartbeat. God saved you from that so that you could fully recover for a purpose. Your life has holy validity. That's what it means to rise up. You have a reason to be here. Don't let anyone knock you out of your place or tell you anything different. God has you alive. It means to rise up. Kum means listen to God's word and ignore the noise around you. Ignore the tumult. Jesus said, uh, there's a passage in there that says Jesus overhearing what they said and ignoring them. So you have permission from the word of God. That if you have naysayers coming against you, 
if you have doubters, unbelievers, if you have critics coming against you, if you have people who are professed believers, but they're just unnecessarily mean to you, you have the permission to shake dust off of your feet. You have the permission overhearing what they said and completely ignoring them. You have permission to ignore the fear. We walk on water as Christians. We walk on water we do not fear. So arise means absolutely become powerful. That's another definition. Arise, kum, rise up means you come on the scene. You show up. You appear. You're a leader. You're a prophet. You are a king. And guess what you rise up out of? Calamity, battle. You stand up and God shines down upon thee. You become a witness. You rise up standing in front of the throne. You rise up out of inaction you rise up out of illness you rise up out of flatlining to a specific god ordained deed here's the last uh aspect of the definition i will say arise or kum means to start again it means to make a divine move it means to go somewhere for the sake of the kingdom so that is what god is after when he makes a leader and it is un incalculable, except for trust, that God would ask someone like Joshua, who had seen two million people, some of which I'm sure he was very attached to, perish. But God said, you are the one that I want to live. And through you alone, only you, be strong, be bold, be courageous, and amazing things will happen. And even after all of this, I assure you, good success. Just keep my word. Keep my word. Keep my word, my Bible, on the inside of you. Pay attention to the red letter Bible, the red letter words of Jesus Christ. They are paid for. All these words of the Bible are paid for in his blood. But you keep those red letter words of Jesus Christ on the inside of you. Be it unto you as you have believed your faith has made you well. You swallow those down like medicine. They do not return to the Lord void and these bones shall live. So I wanted to share that with y'all. I'm going to finish with a quick uh, segment from Matthew Henry in a prayer. This is the secret of communion with God. Matthew Henry, he's one of my all time favorite writers. He's a sweet writer with a heart for God. Um, he's not a critic. He is a sweet, loving writer, very respectful of both God's created and God's word. And he says, this life of communion with God and constant attendance upon him is heaven on earth. It is doing the work of heaven. It is doing the will of God just as they do it in heaven, whose business it is always to behold the face of our Father. It is an earnest of the blessedness of heaven. It is a preparative for it and a preludium to it. It is having our conversation in heaven whence we look for the Savior, looking for him as our Savior. We look to him as our director and by this we make it to appear that our hearts are there. Our hearts are in heaven, which will give us good ground to stand on and to expect that we will all be there shortly. So in summation, what the man is saying is our hearts are in heaven. And so we live here flat footed on the ground, knowing that where our hearts are, our treasure is. We love God. We're already living in an eternal life. And our job is to do God's will here, however he decides it. So I will say again, a lot of this stuff is incalculable except for trust. It comes down to trusting God, accepting his will, and saying, Okay, God, I trust you in every area, and I'm going to have a good attitude because I know my Father loves me eternally and now. So thank you so much, you guys, for joining me. Uh, I love each and every one of you. Uh, put your prayer request in if you would like, and I'll go through and check. Um, I am so happy when you all pray for each other. 
it, it's like a mother looking at, at, forgive me, looking at her children all getting along. I absolutely love this group. I absolutely love all you guys. Let me pray for you. Uh, and I will conclude and we'll check back sometime, sometime later. So please join me in prayer. And I thank you for praying for me as well. So dear God, I pray for every single person listening to my voice right now. I pray for every single person in this group, if they have the opportunity to watch this video or not, that every single person that has clicked that button has clicked that button because they want to know you more and they want to know your directives for their life. So God, we stand together. We pray that nothing would come against their time with the Lord. We pray that you would be a garrison over time that you would give us plenty of rest and plenty of time to meditate on you, plenty of time to enjoy you and just be in love with you and just absorb your presence and help us through the Holy Spirit, bring your word to life on the inside of us. We thank you so much for the word that you have given us, your Bible, God. We pray so much that it comes into our spirit, quickens our spirit and works its way out in the physical world. And we pray, Father, that we would fully recover. Every single person here will fully recover, not partially recover. We will fully recover and we will all be leaders under you in your name. That you would use us to lead the masses, but mostly that we would just enjoy you and enjoy being with you and let you do what you do through us like a projector of light. is a, It can be a lot of pressure, but it can also be a lot of love. And we exchange all the negative anxiousness for love and we enjoy being in this position. And rather than being afraid, God, we are thankful that you have chosen us to lead. We are thankful that you did whatever you needed to do to get our attention so that we do your will on the earth. We thank you for that opportunity. Help us, Lord, to enjoy it, to let the trauma go and absorb all of your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Father, for using us. Glory to God. Amen.